Hello from ABA Mid-Year Meeting 2018 in Vancouver, Canada. I'm Lawrence Coletti. I'm Suzanne Anton. Ellen Rosenblum. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have a special treat. Two attorneys general uh, joining us today. So first I have Madam Attorney Former Suzanne Anton of British Columbia. And I also have Madam Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum of Oregon. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. It's my first time here. Um, beautiful city. Obviously Canadian. You know, I've, I've spent some time up in Ontario. Definitely reminds me of that, but uh, definitely better ocean access than Ontario. So... Well, we're thrilled to have the American Bar Association coming here for the mid-year meeting. So thank you Ab- to absolutely. all your listeners in the American Bar Association. That, that's that's tremendous. They'll be happy to hear that. So, ladies, I invited you here today. I found this a, a really interesting uh, on the panel, uh, or one of the many panel discussions, but this was a luncheon. It was titled, The Challenges for Women in Politics, Both Personal and Professional. And so I thought... Wow, there's a uh, there's a there's a luncheon about getting into politics at a legal convention. So, what is this all about? Uh, who wants to open up? Who's the volunteer? I'm happy to. This is Ellen from Oregon, uh, and you can call me Ellen. So, we were invited to talk to a wonderful group of about it looked like about a hundred lawyers, women lawyers from Canada and the U.S. to try to frankly encourage them to run for office. You know, this year something like twenty six thousand women have indicated interest in running for office in the U.S. compared to 900 last year. And I'm very involved with the Democratic Attorney General Association initiative to encourage more women to run for attorney general. So I'm very excited about any group that wants to hear what we have to say about how great it is to be in political office, but some of the difficulties in making the decision to run and, and winning, frankly. Okay, but uh, in particular, you know, obviously, uh, the people that study and follow politics, I do. I'm very interested in what goes on in our country. And so I do notice that there are a lot of uh, at least law degree people uh, in politics, if not attorneys, for at least a little while before they got into politics. But uh, interesting. So obviously, you're noticing the same thing, but there's strengths within a law degree, also being an attorney and understanding the law when you decide to go and serve in office. So how about that? Let's talk a little bit about the strengths of of attorneys in, in running for politics? Well, so we're from two different political systems, the Canadian system and the U.S. system. And the Canadian system is a parliamentary system, so you actually have to get elected in your district. And then your party has to form government. It has to have more seats than the other team, so to speak. And uh, then the, the premier will choose a cabinet, including choosing attorney generals. And those attorneys general are, are almost always lawyers. Not They don't have to be, but m- normally are. So when I was elected in 2013, I was asked by our then premier to become the attorney general of BC and then served for four years. So it was a terrific position. The point today, though, your, your comment, Lawrence, about that there are a lot of uh, lawyers in politics, I'm not sure that that's true. It's not true in Canada. In fact, I would say that there's actually a deficit of lawyers in politics. Oh, really? Lawyers make very good politicians because of the training. There's a number of elements which we can go into. And so there's two deficits that we were looking at today. One is the deficit of lawyers in politics, and the other, the, the very significant deficit of women in politics. So it was a thrill to be able to be on a panel with my new friend, Ellen, to talk to uh, women lawyers about what it's like to be in politics and to encourage them to go into politics. It was an upbeat conversation. And, you know, there's definitely some dark side to running. And uh, we had to address that a little bit because we don't want uh, women to jump into this without having considered all the both the risks and the rewards. And particularly if you're a young woman and have family responsibilities or a young man, frankly, uh, but the women tend to, to take on more of that burden. So we just wanted to make sure that people knew that we supported them and that women should not only support each other in running for office, they should dig deeper and and donate money to political campaigns. But the bottom line is if if they're interested in running, we want to encourage that and we want to help them get to the point where they will feel comfortable um, actually running and and seeing a path to victory. Let's talk about some of the some of the consequences, you know, that obviously this was a, a luncheon where you got to talk about some of the unique challenges to women in particular. And I'd like to highlight that, you know, obviously I'm, I'm a guy, so I'm not going to uh, 100% understand all of this, but I'd like to learn. And so, uh, you know, let's start. So I see personal uh, challenges. I also see professional challenges. But 
Why don't we start with the personal ones? I think uh, for, for attorneys in my age group, kind of the family bearing years, that's definitely a challenge for, for both guys and gals, uh, particularly my, my women colleagues that I graduated law school with. It's something that's coming up. So why don't we start with the personal elements there? There's no question that if, if you're a mom with kids or a dad with kids, it, politics can be a tough business. And one of the things I said to the room today, you know, is if you like politics and you, and you have young children, you might want to consider local politics first. In fact, if you like politics, local politics is a good way to get started. Now, Ellen has a different experience because she ran directly as attorney general. Whereas we run, as I mentioned earlier, in a district. And so I, I actually came up through local politics myself, through city, city of Vancouver politics, and then into provincial politics. But it's, it is challenging for women, but it's also very rewarding. And that was one of the things I wanted to emphasize today too, which is politics has a lot of rewards. You can get things done. It's interesting, it's inspiring, it's very intense. So um, even though there are challenges, if you're interested in it, Go for it. Get involved and just start down that road. And many women go into politics because of some personal experience they've had, perhaps raising a child with some special needs. Uh, some of our best politicians in Oregon went into politics after they had been school teachers, uh, trying to uh, persuade the schools to help them to make some modifications in policies and practices and figured, hey, I'm going to go on the school board to make this happen. And they did. And then they eventually guess what? One of them became governor, our first woman governor, Barbara Roberts. So men sometimes go into politics to go into politics. Women often go into politics because something personal takes them there. So in addition to the family uh, challenges and uh, perhaps responding to a personal challenge, what were uh, some of the other aspects personally that you found particularly challenging for women as they decide to uh, graduate into a role in politics? Politics itself is a tough business. You you have to run for election. People people can say nasty things to you, sure, uh, sure. Um, wh whether you're a man or a woman. And uh, there is sort of the good-looking man syndrome, where people feel that they want to vote for the good-looking man. And but you know, women are perfectly capable of running against that syndrome, so to speak. And women are perfectly capable of achieving elected office. We just need to encourage women to run. We actually here in British Columbia don't have a bad record. We're at 39%, which is actually relatively good for a jurisdiction, but it's not enough. I want to see more women elected, and I know Ellen would like to see more women elected in the U.S. It's good for all of us to bring a diversity of experience to the table, and women certainly bring that experience of their lives, and um, we need that at all of our elected offices. Women need training in how to uh, be a successful candidate and uh, the Democratic Attorney General Association has just partnered with a program called Emerge which does that training and is now going to tailor the training to women who wish to run for prosecutor positions, uh, district attorneys, and also attorneys general. And we're really excited about that because as good a credentials as you may have, as good a support system as you may have to help you get there, uh, there's a lot more that you need to know and be able to do and plan for. And Emerge is just a fantastic program that I think is going to help hundreds, if not thousands, of women to get where they want to go once they take the plunge. And we're hoping that they will take that plunge. You can have small children and just, you know, drag them along, frankly, on the campaign trail. Or if you need to leave them home, that's understandable. But you need to have that partner or perhaps, you know, grandma who can help you out, grandpas too, by the way, so that you can get there. But if you ha if we just had people in office who were, you know, in their 50s and 60s, then we wouldn't really be bringing the issues to the table that need to be there. And so we are encouraging women and progressive men uh, who are supportive of women to step it up. And we think this is the year of the woman, maybe the second year of the woman, because I think we had the first about 10 years ago. Uh, but the time has come. And so we just want to be there to be supportive of these wonderful potential candidates. Professional challenges. So talk a little bit about the, uh, the personal, but uh, in terms of uh, professional, what elements seem to be a little more unique to women as they get into politics? Well, are you talking about women lawyers or, or women generally? I mean, there are challenges for anyone going into politics if you are a professional, since you use that word. You do actually often take a pay cut. And I think that that's one of the challenges for getting certain good community leaders into politics is they don't necessarily want to take that cut in pay. And that's why, again, I think a lot of older people are prepared to do that rather than young people who are in the prime of their careers. That is a challenge. I don't actually have a good answer to that one. Back to women and younger women. 
first of all, kids are a real asset on the campaign trail. They're great. <laughs> they're, they're great in your photos. But um, the other thing about politics is you can get into it by working in your local riding association, by going into a campaign. There is always a political campaign in the next year, whether it's local, provincial, in Canada, statewide or federal. There's always a campaign. Go get involved. Meet the people in the back room. Very good to have the people in the back room having your back when the time comes. So there's all kinds of things you can do to prepare yourself in terms of your own knowledge, people who know you, your leadership positions. And when I looked around that room today of all the lawyers in the room, and they were, as a matter of fact, quite a few young lawyers there, very capable women, very capable young women in that room, very capable of going into politics. I'm the first woman Attorney General Oregon's had. I don't want to be the last. I want to be providing a support system for those who will come after me. I have had nothing but really wonderful support from my community, from my state in this role. So in terms of professional challenges, I would say go for it because once you're in office, you can do a tremendous amount. It certainly helps if you come to the job with you know good background for it, with the kinds of, of instincts and skills that will set you up well because there certainly are pitfalls in any political position, particularly one like this where we are the lawyer. I am the lawyer for state government in my state, but I'm also in a political uh, bully pulpit type of role, which I love. I love the confluence of politics and policy and law. And so professionally, there's really nothing better. Well, I just have one last question before we close it out today. If our listeners want to follow up with you, uh, talk a little bit more about what you discussed, uh, learn from your experiences in your career, how can they find you? Well, I'm on Twitter at Suzanne Anton and Facebook, but Twitter is my main uh, social media. And I will just say, you know, for a lawyer to become the attorney general is a dream job. I was so thrilled at the latter part of my political career to be able to be the attorney general of British Columbia. It is so darned interesting. And I think a lot of lawyers want to be judges, but every lawyer in their heart of hearts would like to be the attorney general. So <laughs> I feel extremely fortunate that I'm in that position. I'm guessing Ellen would feel it, the same it way. It absolutely is a dream job. It's a challenging job, and particularly in the current political climate, you know, sometimes you lose a little bit of sleep, but it's worth it. And you get to deal with the most interesting legal issues in your jurisdiction. And they come to your table and you chew them over and you give direction and you listen to your expert lawyers and you think about them from a political point of view, from a policy point of view. There is no better job for a lawyer. So I do, as I say, feel very lucky to have been able to serve as the Attorney General of British Columbia. All right, one more time, contact information for our listeners. At Suzanne Anton, Twitter. At Ellen Rosenblum, Twitter. I also have a, a political Facebook page, and you can just reach me. I'm the current sitting Attorney General of Oregon. Pretty easy to find. Ellen Rosenblum. For each end of the road for today's episode, but I want to thank our guest attorneys generals. Wait, it's attorneys general. Thank you, uh, Rosenblum and Anton. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us today. I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. And if you like what you heard today, please rate us in Apple Podcasts. See you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Yeah.